Hey, this is Allie Edwards, and I am here today to dive into working on the process of putting together my Week in the Life album for 2019. I have done my week of documenting, I have my words and my photos, and now I need to figure out how to get them into my album so that I will have them in a tangible place to be able to enjoy looking at them again in the future and to feel this sense of accomplishment for getting the story told. And one of the things that I love about this process is that there is a revisiting of the week when I go through, um, when I go through the photos, when I read back through my words, I am given the opportunity to see different kinds of stories emerge um, even compared with the ones that I may have documented during the week, and I love that piece of the process. So in this video today, what I want to do is show you how I'm working on kind of the beginning of my album and then what I am doing for Monday specifically. So that's what you're going to find in this video. I will do additional follow-up videos that you will be able to find um, here on my blog or on my channel that uh, show you how the rest of the week comes together. So let's start off just by looking here in my album, a couple things that I've done or I've started here in the beginning. Um, you can see a video on my initial setup process. I had already done some of this in the beginning. I'd already printed out this word art. I added a little chipboard piece on there. Um, the back here, I just had this This Week card slipped in. So I picked one of my photos. This is one that just um, is not of anyone in particular, and it's really focused on the grass with the soccer girls behind there uh, blurred out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out um, this week, just make it smaller. I'm going to use a date, rolling date stamp, and I'm going to just stick this on here as kind of a an additional title, right? Here's my overwhelming sentiment, and then here's my title page, which actually establishes when this week is. And then I put in a calendar. This is I just printed this out from my from iCal on my computer, and I am going to add a pattern paper to this. I thought about adding a photo, but then I kind of wanted to add something else. And so I pulled out a piece of a pattern paper from my stash. This is from um, Pink Paisley, and it's just a text-based pattern paper that I think that I'm going to cut out and then potentially put some sort of embellishment um, on there. The other ones that I was looking at, I also have, um, have these really cool, fun, big florals that I've had in my stash. Um, these are from One Canoe too, and I'm kind of thinking also maybe I would cut along here and add this onto this page. So maybe this would be a little, maybe there would be two pieces of pattern paper, almost like a layer, uh, just to bring in some of that kind of organic floral element. In my week, I took a lot of photos of flowers because that's something that I really love, enjoy, a big piece of my own life. Um, especially at this time of the year. And so this feels like it is a good match for that. I have a couple other large florals um, that I may work in as well. On the back of this one, I have created a page that's gonna get adhered to the back here. Um, that is basically what I consider to be a we are. Um, if you are not a we, you may be an I am. Uh, but I always like to either do a reason why or some sort of establishment of who are we at this point in time. And so I list out the ages of everybody. I talk a little bit about what happened during this week. Um, very you know, very high level overarching stuff, like the weather was really nice. Um, and then I just talk about like kind of what my overwhelming feeling for this week was. Now in some projects I do that reason why section or I do this sort of thing in advance um, to set a tone for the project. And then other times I will do it at the end. It totally doesn't matter when you do it. Uh, doing it at the end gives you a different perspective, obviously, than when you do it in the beginning. And so it's just, um, nice to know that you have those kinds of options, that you can set an intention in advance, or you can do this at, you know, later on in the process when you're actually looking through all of your other things. So then coming into Monday, uh, I just started sitting at my computer and kind of looking through my photos and figuring out how many do I need to print here for the pockets that I have available? Do I want to excuse me, do some things that are outside of the pockets? That's always an option as well. 
What I know for sure about Monday, uh, and this has been true for me in this project for years and years and years, is Monday's almost always the day where I have the most photos, and often it's when I have the most words. And one of my memory keeping philosophies is the idea of starting with story. And often what that means for me is that I want to make sure that I am dealing with the words first before I'm even dealing with the rest of the decoration. Sometimes the photos, it just kind of depends. Um, so what I did this time and what I am doing is I printed out my journaling. And my journaling is coming directly from blog posts that I wrote during the week. Um, and I've done it this way the past few years where I've separated the words from the photos. Um, I have done it in the past where I added the words directly to the photos themselves and then they live that way within the album. I use Photoshop for that. You can write, hand write, you know, have little journaling spots on there, something like that. Um, this to me is the simplest and easiest way to approach this where I am making sure that I am focusing on the words first. So for me, in the case of this project, my Monday, when I set it up, I, I set, started with an eight and a half by 11 template, and then I created a six by eight box and I added my journaling inside. It actually ended up being four pages of journaling. So not every day in my project is going to be like that. There will be some days, I think probably towards Sunday, where it's almost uh, one page and it, it almost doesn't make sense to do it that way. And I'm going to deal with each day individually t looking at what is the content, what is the content, the words and photos that I have to work with for that uh, particular day. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these down to six by eight and I'm going to add them into the six by eight page protector that I have set aside for the day. In this case, because I have four pages, I'm going to need to add an additional six by eight page protector into my album. That's fine, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, some years I have made this, the journaling, when I have printed it out, it's the actual size of the page protector, so the outside size of the page protectors, which allows you to put it into the album itself um, rather than putting it in a page protector. But I think I'm actually gonna do that with a photo this time and have two enlarged photos back to back that will go in. And we'll, I haven't got there yet, we'll see how that goes. I'm also considering doing a title on, on this here, which, which is probably gonna be the Cork Monday, and then maybe stamping this week or Monday Reflections or Monday Giving Thanks, something like that. Um, one of these or potentially one off of this set where it says um, like currently or maybe noticing, um, which is a big piece of how I like to go about this project is that idea of paying attention. Uh, so that is gonna be the next step for me here. I'm just gonna trim these out. I'm gonna decide what how I wanna do the title here. I'm gonna get all that in there and then I'm gonna move to the photos. Um, you'll also see that I have um, you know, I do have spots on here with the inside the album already that have room for journaling. Um, sometimes I add the words directly on them. Like you can see, I did that for the insert here. But in this case, what I did is I took this part right here as the jumping off point for my journaling for the week. So for Monday, it was kind of this looking at the idea of this week. Uh, so I may move some things around, I'm thinking as I look here. Um, same with this one, because my journaling is already printed out, I may adjust this. And I've seen people do some really cool things with this card and with this one where they add the photo down below. Um, you could add half of a photo here, uh, or I could even add that actually to the top of my journaling and make some adjustments there. That would be another way to do it where I could reprint that and have the journaling be on the top. I think in this case though, it would push me probably into a fifth page, which isn't what I necessarily what I want uh, to do. So I will probably use that for, um, for a photo. Actually, maybe it could go on the back here. I'm gonna continue to think about that. I'm gonna cut these out, get the title established, and then we'll move forward from there. Okay, so as often happens, uh, I did change my mind about how I wanted to do this, and I do want to use this card on the top. So I think that's going to be that is going to be how I am going to 
tackle my journaling um, is add this card onto the top which just basically just frees up another spot for um, for a photo in those four by six pockets. So I set it up on my computer to be able to place this right on top and keep the date part and the good day rough day. I actually got a new date stamp that I'm gonna use. This is um, from One Canoe 2 and I'll link that in the supplies below. I thought it just had a cute, you know, different date set up and I'll show you what this looks like here in just a second. So we are in May, and that would have been the 6th. Oh, six. Let's do a test, test stamp. I always highly recommend a test stamp. Um, let me use the stays on here. Basically this is just a, like a different font and a smaller size than the other date stamp that I use. I think it's just nice to have some variety. Cute, see, so it's little, small, um, and that I'm gonna just stamp right on here. Just like that, oh, love it, love it. That's gonna be super fun to play with. And then I'm gonna trim that out, and then I adjusted the rest of the pages to fit um, and, I, and the way that I was able to adjust them is I just changed a couple of the spots where I had had returns. Um, so sometimes when I'm writing on my blog, especially I like to have specific sentences kind of stand out. And one of the ways that you can have them stand out is by just having a hard return and having it be one sentence. Um, so I just moved a couple of those around on here and that made it so that I was able to fit all the journaling on four pages um, to be able to fit it still into the album itself. So let's take a look at how this is going to look here. Trim it down, it's probably a little shorter. So the Monday will go on top of this first page. I will probably do a check mark on there of whether it's a good day. I think most of my days this last week were good days. It's not always like that, obviously, but um, it's the season that I'm in right now, so I'm going to give thanks for that. Um, I wonder if I have, I have a little X stamp somewhere, but I'm just going to do a check mark right there with my pen. And so this is going to go into... Here, this is where I'm gonna to need to add another one of these. But this will be the beginning of my four pages of journaling. I also could have made the type size smaller, and I've done that lots of times uh, before. And there's something else that I just saw right there where there's two returns, so I wanna, I'm gonna reprint that. Reprinting is something that happens. Okay, I'm gonna go make that assessment, and I'm gonna trim these out and then put them in here, and then I'll show you what that looks like. So before I finished up with the journaling, I got distracted and wanted to do this page. And so this is that page where it has the we are um, statement. So it's the calendar page with the we are, we are statement and then this a little bit of pattern paper play is essentially what it is, where I'm using a text-based pattern paper as my initial background on the flap of the calendar. So you can see I just folded it over and then I adhered this text-based pattern paper with, there's a link below for that um, on there. And then I took this really cool floral pattern paper that you heard me mention previously and went ahead and just cut that out. So some people call this fussy cutting, there's all kinds of names for it, whatever. I just cut it out. Um, so I used some small, sharp little scissors. And at first I was gonna leave a border of kind of that grayish, the creamy grayish, and then I decided to not have that and just used, there's kind of a dark gray outline um, around this floral design. And so I decided to just use that as, um, my template basically for cutting this out. Now this is something that I don't do all the time, um, but it's something that I like to do from time to time. And I think it's kind of a fun way to bring something a little bit different into this project, just a little bit of something else. Um, I'm not going crazy on you. I'm not gonna bring a whole bunch of other stuff in here. Um, 
but I thought this was a fun addition and it was a nice way to put something else on top of the calendar. You could absolutely put a photo on there instead. That's something I've done like in my December daily project in the past of adding a, um, adding a photo on top, like print a custom photo and then put it on top of the calendar that would work just as well. But this is what I felt like doing this time. And so that's why I did it. And I really like how it turned out. It's just something fun. You'll also see later on that I added, um, I kept the scraps from this and then I added another piece of that floral design. I cut out another piece and added it in a different location at the bottom of one of my journaling spots or my journaling pages. So you'll see that later on. I made a couple of adjustments here. I did want, I didn't want that blue leaf to touch the edge of the flap there. So you can see I moved it over a little bit and just trimmed it, um, trimmed it off. And then I attached an Avery index tab, which I almost always do anytime I have something that's a insert or something like that. That. So Avery index tab and I'm going to stamp something in a little bit that's going to go in the pocket. I also grabbed another one of those die cut, the black die cuts that were a part of the main kit and um, I put it back and I'll bring it back again because it ends up going on there. Um, and I liked having that as a companion to what's going to go here with this this week card. So I didn't cut this to any specific dimensions. I just tried to leave a similar sized border all the way around. I kept it rectangle. I considered um, rounding the corners on it, but I didn't. And I just stamped using that date stamp that I just showed you guys a couple minutes ago, um, went ahead and stamped this the week, right? The starting on the 6th through the 12th. And then that's going to go ahead and get adhered down onto uh, this grassy photo. You could put any kind of photo there. I also added in that um, additional die cut there that says loving on the top. I wanted to put that in. It's just kind of like a tab sticking up uh, off the top of the design. It's also, um, when you look at it like that, it's kind of reminiscent of the index tab that I put on the other side as well. It's a nice echo um, of that look. I did decide to add a chipboard, uh, one of those asterisks there. I You'll see me add that on in a little bit. There goes that other die cut down on there. Um, I like having the black on both pages, right? There's some nice pops of color as well as that, um, the black from those uh, die cuts there. And I added a little stamp that says something about this week, I think, um, and put that inside the Avery Index tab there and added some staples just because I like the texture. Okay, so I've made a little bit more progress off camera, and this is kind of what happens to me sometimes when I get into this project. I start, I was gonna start with Monday, and I did kind of start with Monday, and then I jumped into what I call um, kind of batch, batch working or batch processing all of the content. And to me, that what that means is that I decided to get all of the words printed first. So I went all the way through the whole week. You can see down here I have um, the pages printed out and I decided to just keep it the same, follow the same formula using the full page six by eight to hold uh, the journaling. And so some of these pages or some of these days are going to require two of the full page six by eight. I've got, I think I have Tuesday in here. Let's see, I haven't actually adhered down the Monday. I'll probably do that with you guys right now. Oh, here's the Monday. So here's what Monday ended up looking like in here. Um, two full days. I put the food one in the middle and I'm going to keep that in between those two full days that will then flow into the four pocket four by six. I also decided to still do photo enlargements because I like having them. In the past, I have done them inside the six by eight pocket. So I decided to do them the size of the page protectors themselves, which is uh, 6.75 by 8.25 if you wanted to make pages that were the same size as the page protectors. I am using a layered template set that I have available in the shop, um, at least for this date part. And this is going to go in on the second page. So it's not going to be the first one when you come into Monday, but it'll be the second one. And it's just another reminder of uh, what day you were on there. And actually, I believe I have Tuesday already in here. So let's show you. Here's the one I did for Tuesday. This is, I haven't printed any other photos yet. 
um, Tuesday, but the full page, you can see I used the hole punch to punch the holes, which then when you turn it over, the one on the back is a, a photo of Isaac and Simon, and then I have my Tuesday uh, journaling in here with the food, and I'll put something on the back. This one has, comes, oh, this one was three pages of journaling, so I ended up putting a six by eight photo in the back that will then flow into these two four by six photos. So it's a little bit, um, you're looking at it a little bit disjointed right now, but it's gonna all make sense here in a little bit once I get going. So like I said, what I'm working on right now is cutting down these pages, the six by eight journaling pages, uh, and then also establishing these full page photos that are the same size as the page protectors and printing those out. And this is literally what I do, which is just adhering them back to back and then punching holes in them to create a page in the album itself. I do this in December daily. Um, I don't think I really do it in one little word, but it's definitely something that I do um, in my December daily project each year of creating pages with photos back to back. I'm gonna go back in and trim these a little bit because um, I never cut them exactly straight, which totally doesn't matter to me in the least, but then once I adhere them back to back, then I wanna adjust them a little bit. This is the six hole punch that I use. I'll link, to, link it for you. It's um, from Amazon and it is from Japan, I think is where it comes from. Uh, and I use one of the page protectors just as kind of the initial spot to show me where the holes are. And then I often just pull it out and punch there. And I shake it all on the floor and then I come back later and uh, sweep it all up once I'm done um, for the day or done for the project. So again, looks like my cutting wasn't very good, but I'm just gonna take these scissors and I'm gonna line it up with this one on the back here. And I'm just cutting off the part that looks like it's extra. So at a certain point, like once I have all of my words and photos into the album, that's when I'll go back and add stickers, add embellishments, put them on top of um, some of these photo pages like this. This will probably have an embellishment on it. But you can see again here how this sits in the album. So we've got those first few pages, title, the actual like establishing what the week is, my fold out page with my little floral decoration on there, um, kind of my reason why or my we are page. Then it starts flowing into Monday. I have just one photo in there right now and I'll be putting the other ones in there. But then you can see the full page photo that moves into the journaling that's in these six by eight size. Again, remember this idea that I am trying to start with story and I'm literally making sure that all of those words um, are able to get in here without having to work too hard to get the words onto the photos that they, uh, that they go to. I'm looking at it more like these, you can read through get my reflections, get my observations, get, get my thoughts on the days, uh, and then you can look at the photos as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, trim all of these out, get these the actual daily journaling pieces set up. I'm gonna print out the rest of my photos, and then we will go from there. Okay, before I keep moving on this album, I wanted to just do a walkthrough and show you where I'm at right now. I've got my main journaling sections, and those outside of the page protector photos all in now. So let's just do a quick flip through here. Uh, remember the fold out part. And then coming into Monday, I've printed just the first two photos. I'm also gonna use just a little bit of twine and I'm gonna put this on each one of these tags that I do have in there. I'm punching a second hole or a hole for both of those to go together. Uh, it's just a simple and easy way to do that. So still need to print additional photos for here, but this is what I wanted you to see. So here's all of those um, full page photos that are the full size of the page protectors back to back, which then goes into um, my actual journaling. I'm thinking about uh, putting the food page on 
um, in between the journaling on some pages and in some some it will come after just kind of it's going to be varied so you see that and then this is still room for additional photos um, coming into Tuesday here we've got that page with the photo full page photo on the back and then a couple pages of journaling with the food on the inside obviously still needs photo um, this one had a blank back so I did a full six by eight photo there coming into Wednesday full page Wednesday again using the layered template set uh, there is the back full page this one the food I think I'm going to move to the next page I like these two pages next to each other with that full page going into the journaling so this can go on the back here and then I'll still have you know four additional photos in this pocket then we've got Thursday the opening photo there and the photo on the back going into the journaling and they have the food here and then I looks like I still need which day is that Thursday six by eight photo I'm gonna write myself a note Still need a Thursday six by eight photo. That's what I was. Good. This is part of why you go through this before moving on to the next piece. Got the big Friday picture, which was super fun, um, and then a picture on the back. Moving into the Friday journaling there, and then the food one will go on the back. Four pockets for the three four by six pictures. Then we've got Saturday. And these are just adhered back to back. So printed out. These are this is on Epson photo paper that I'm actually printing on my Canon uh, printer. Works great for me. Let's move this guy. So we've got the Saturday paired with the enlarged photo. You also see on the bottom of this one, I decided to bring back that floral element again. So it's kind of linking that back to the beginning, um, the two different layers with the part of the cutout floral pattern paper there. And then coming into Sunday, those other pages, and I've got my full page photo, full page photo on the back, journaling. This was as much as I had for the journaling for this day, so this may be as much as you have, which is totally fine. Um, and then a photo of Anna on the back here, and that will go into these other ones. So it looks like I need to still do a Thursday six by eight, but other than that, I have all of my uh, photo enlargements are now in place so now I can just go back in and print the 4x6 and the 3x4 photos and then I will get to the point of adding embellishments and playing around a little bit more so I just want to kind of give you an update on that.